So, hello everyone and welcome to the section on quantifying and communicating the impacts of energy performance investments. Uh, so before we get started, uh, please let me go through a few housekeeping remarks. Uh, so as you know, the section will last approximately 45 minutes and in the first 30 minutes, we will have two speakers presenting uh, their projects uh, and then we will have a Q&A se session. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, please mute your mic to avoid any background uh, noise. I can hear some back, background noise. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying, in the first 30 minutes, we will have two uh, speakers presenting their projects. And then we will have a slot of 15 minutes, more or less, to um, address some questions. So really, please look at the chat function as a way to engage with us, so to share your questions. Uh, we will uh, pile them up and uh, address them soon after the two presentations. Um, again, meanwhile, please mute your mic to avoid uh, any background noise and also turn off your camera in order to not overuse somehow the streaming connection. Uh, with that said, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is uh, Filippo Gasparin. I'm working as project manager at the European Climate Infrastructure and Environment Executive Agency, so CINEA in short. Uh, as you may already know, uh, this agency has been tasked by the European Commission to support the implementation of the European Green Deal. Uh, which is uh, aiming at transforming the European Union into a carbon neutral uh, uh, economy by 2050. Uh, indeed, it is a very ambitious goal, and, uh, but nevertheless, we do believe that we can, uh, we can uh, reach and we can meet this, uh, this target. And uh, this is also why the European Union has uh, put on the table uh, more than 1.8 trillion euros to support the twin uh, transition, so the digital and the clean uh, transition of our common economy. However, this will not be uh, enough, I would say, meaning that also the private sector will have to play its role by mobilizing uh, uh, private uh, financing. And this actually gives me the opportunity to already introduce the subject of today, so which is uh, how we can make investment on energy efficiency and more in general you know, on sustainable measures uh, uh, more, I would say, attractive and uh, uh, strategic. So uh, let me now turn over to the first uh, speaker, uh, Clemens uh, Rode, which is the head of energy efficiency business unit at Fraunhofer Institute. Uh, he has uh, also been the coordinator uh, for the M Benefits project, uh, an European project uh, that uh, is about to end. So in a couple of weeks will uh, will be terminated, uh, and therefore uh, we we will be able to learn more on the um, project main achievements, uh, results, and of course uh, lesson learned. So Clemens, the floor or actually the screen is yours. I know that you have a presentation. Yeah, thank you, Filippo, um, for the kind introduction. And um, I'm happy to be here today to present uh, the results and some short insights into uh, the multiple benefits project um, on which we have been working for uh, more than three years uh, right now. This project, as um, most of the Horizon 2020 projects, which are funded by the European Union, is uh, a joint effort of several partners from throughout Europe. So we have uh, partners with a more academic background. So universities, uh, universities of applied sciences, um, also uh, uh, spreading from the UK down to Greece and down to Coimbra. So we more or less cover all the uh, uh, areas of Europe with that. And on the other hand, we have the implementation partners. So the partners who actually took the results of the uh, academic uh, and uh, research um, and took it to the field applied and verified and validated the methods and tools we developed within those projects. And you can see our implementation partners also uh, comprised of, on the one hand, energy agencies, but on the other hand, we also had partners uh, uh, from, from the uh, consulting business in here. So a broad variety of partners who was involved in that project. 
what is uh, the starting uh, point of our of our project and and the major topic or the under the major uh, un, uh, the major uh, target we had was to make energy efficiency a strategic topic uh, inside inside companies so um, we wanted to uh, be able to place the energy efficiency measures inside the companies in the in this uh, business triangle of value proposition risks and costs and you will see in a minute um, where we normally stand uh, with energy efficiency projects and that there are some limitations which also prevent the implementation of projects inside companies and this is a starting point where we see we see this huge energy efficiency potentials in commercial applications so in industry but also in commerce um, but those potentials are not really tapped despite perhaps the convincing uh, uh, business case behind the energy savings, um, which we from the energy community think is a convincing story, but in the end, the projects are not taken up. To achieve that target, and I'll say something about the methodology in a second, we developed several uh, 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 tools, and the core of this project was uh, the toolkits we developed and the trainings uh, we, we carried out to somehow um, uh, enable stakeholders in the market to use the methodology. Regarding the toolkit, the toolkit uh, we developed allowed a standard analysis and evaluation of energy efficiency projects with respect to multiple benefits. So we extended the classical evaluation of the energy benefits, so looking at energy cost savings, to a holistic analysis of the, of the, of the project. And this is complemented by communication tools, because the best project isn't going to happen without a proper communication and a targeted communication, which considers the needs of the target group. So when you talk to energy people, the story about energy savings or, or climate stuff might be a convincing story. But when you talk to people from uh, uh, your business development or from maintenance or from, uh, from human resources, they don't care that you need to tell them another story to convince them that a project is interesting also for them. With this toolkits we developed, we went into trainings and we had several uh, variations of training. So um, we trained uh, our in within our project on the one hand, um, really in, in, in person. So we had physical trainings. And that was, of course, well before the Corona pandemic hit us. Um, so we had this in person trainings. Um, we also had webinars and those webinars are available also on our project homepage um, right now. And especially in the in person trainings, we also had the tool of a serious game as, uh, as, a, as a tool to enable people to really learn from a real life situation. And this is uh, the, the pedagog pedagogical dimension we had in our project that very often um, you, you have trainings which are very much focused on a classical lecture style or something like that, where you hear presentations uh, for, for hours and hours. But our idea was to really make people uh, use our toolkit and our methodology. So we set up that serious game environment where people were able to play the role of an energy manager who wants to get his uh, uh, project implemented. So, and this was a blended version of a, of, a, of a virtual environment, but also complemented by real life exercises. And that, and that was very successful to uh, transport the overall idea. In the end, uh, the project, and this is more or less the, the core of it, is that we had uh, pilot projects um, and um, we had uh, uh, a huge variety of projects where we implemented, uh, where we and, and where we applied the methodology we have developed. Um, so we we analyzed uh, the companies in in our in our operational steps. We quantified the effects of the multiple benefits of the project, and then in the end, we communicated and evaluated. Uh, those uh, uh, in pilot implementations, and we are currently in the process of uh, of collecting uh, the results uh, of this of this evaluation and finalizing the reports. Because, as Filippo said, in uh, two weeks we have to deliver the results to the European Commission. Sorry. 
now going a bit to the methodology itself and the, the, the starting questions, as I've said before, was why aren't companies actually investing in energy efficiency? And this is mainly because energy efficiency is not considered strategic um, because of a cultural disconnect we, we see inside companies. So um, energy engineers, they uh, are very good in analyzing energy savings, energy costs, financial payback of their measures. And um, this is some, something I have personally seen over years and years that people are really focusing on that and neglect the dimension that nobody else outside their domain is really interested in those parameters. Because when it comes to the investment, the people who make investment decision in companies, they usually ask what are the strategic impacts of the project on the business. Um, and this is then a question um, the, the, the guys developing the projects don't really understand. And there, the approach here we, we've taken is to go from the classical approach, looking at an energy efficiency measure, having energy savings, and so translating that and thinking this is the end of the story, making it the multiple benefits approach and include the other effects, positive effects of an energy efficiency measure. So how does an energy efficiency measure contribute to the value proposition of the company? Does it make the product quality better? Does it improve flexibility in the company? Does it make the service we provide better? Do we get happier or healthier employees and so on? And those are all aspects which are very often neglected. And we managed to build a methodology which allows it to systematically capture those benefits in the project. And in the end, of course, we can translate that lots of those figures again to, 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 to cost parameters. Um, but this is something we learned from the pilots that the cost savings were not always the major trigger uh, for the companies to say, this is a project we want to invest in. And we're going to see that in a second in the two examples I want to show you. Very shortly, the various steps we have in our multiple benefits approach um, is that we have those steps, as you can see them here on the, on the screen. And what is very different from, from a normal analysis of energy efficiency pro, pro, uh, projects is that we start by understanding the business model and decision-making context of the company. Because a project which is technically the same doesn't have to be the same for two different companies because they have other requirements uh, uh, for their business model. A company which major focus is on quality and, and high value of projects, they might not care so much about production costs because they can somehow reimburse that from the customer, whereas a company who is in the low cost segment for them, every cent in production might be important. So we start by understanding really what's the business model of the company, then talk to the people in the kickoff meeting. Then we look at the energy and operations of the company. So really map the measure to the energy services which are needed to provide the value proposition. Then, produce, then perform the value cost risk analysis with the three dimensions. So we don't look only at the costs, but also at the value created and the risks which are linked to the project. Then we evaluate it make a financial analysis, and finally, after the synthesis and cl conclusion, create a presentation of this holistic analysis. And multiple benefits which are, which are included in this analysis, for example, the blue ones linked to the value proposition are improved staff satisfaction, better product quality, higher production capacity, but also cost impacts like improved workforce pro productivity, less equipment, lower disposal costs, lower maintenance, lower energy costs, but also risk impacts like a lower accident risks. If you think of insulation of hot parts or something like that, reduced risk of breakdowns because you have new equipment, lower commercial risks because you can adapt better to the market or lower CO2 risks. We are now at the very end of this process. So this is just at a glance where we came from. So we started with a theoretical basis at the bottom and we developed the trainings and rolled them then out afterwards. So we did training and communication. And on the other, si other side, we did the pilot implementation of our projects, collected case studies to also have a convincing story to tell to the public, okay, this worked. This is a concept which can be applied in public. And now we already had the final conference a couple of weeks ago, and we are working on the final communication results. Two short examples um, uh, where we see how multiple benefits can, can improve the also the economics, but also the perception of a, of a company. And the first one is in a really small company. Um, and it's a furniture company in Poland, um, which 
Pits, which had um, a very old boiler for hot water generation in their basement. And this boiler had to be fueled by one of the eight employees of the company each day and also checked and maintained. And actually, the employee who did that was uh, the boss of the company because the others were working in parallel. So the boss had less time to sell actually their products. And so the general idea was to, um, to substitute this boiler by uh, um, a solar thermal collector, which is a more or less maintenance-free installation, which doesn't require the daily intervention. So this, on the one hand, reduced the fuel costs. So if you, if you look at the energy-only benefits, those reduced fuel costs would have re resulted in a payback of 38 years. So that was a measure that did not make sense from the terms of energy cost savings at all. But if you consider in the, in the, in the, in the analysis that you have reduced costs of, of, uh, in, in terms of operation, but also better installation safety because you have a higher re reliability of your boiler, reduced accident risks, the air is better because it was a very old and dirty boiler. And then one of the eight employees can work a couple of hours more. This is really has a substantial impact on the project. And then finally, if you all consider that also in monetary terms, the net present value of that measure was 5,600 euros. We had an IRR of over 25% and a simple payback of four years. And so um, that was also an economically interesting project when you consider the multiple benefits. But very much more, it was strategically interesting for the company because we could say, okay, workers will be happier, workers will might even be more productive, which we couldn't quantify here. So a lot of positive co-benefits which went into the decision and the company is super happy with the solution right now. And here the methodology really worked in a very small company. And on the other hand, we now go to a very large company where they electrified their whole compression system. And that measure itself, looking at only energy benefits, had a payback of 11 years and a net present value of 9,000 euros. So it was economically interesting, but um, it, it really improved also the process. Um, uh, so, so it reduced, uh, again, accident risks in the project. It reduced risks of supply interruption. We had less downtime. We have seen less downtime in the company. Um, and it also contributed to the company's vision and strategy uh, to become a carbon neutral company, uh, company. So there were several aspects with, which contributed and factoring in all those factors, um, the project became more interesting and was positively decided upon by the company. And those are only two of the broad uh, uh, number of examples we have whereby including multiple benefits into the project assessment, we uh, reach better economic indicators, but also be a better appraisal of the value of the company, uh, of the project for the company, which led to a successful implementation. And that's it from my side, and I'm happy to take uh, your question in the Q&A session afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clemens. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, very comprehensive uh, overview on the project uh, activities. And I must say that it is, uh, it was really impressive to see to what extent the multiple benefits can really reduce also the payback on uh, energy efficiency uh, investments. And uh, I must say that uh, I'm pretty confident that the M benefits methodology can really support uh, our EU companies to become uh, really more sustainable, more energy efficient, and even more fit for the market and for, for uh, the, the investors. And uh, we should also bear in mind that in order to, to reach the, uh, the carbon neutrality by 2050, the industry sector will have to reduce its emissions of roughly 90, 95% compared to the uh, 1990 levels. So uh, all, uh, this type of you know tools and and measures that can really support the clean energy transition of our companies, I think they are really, uh, yeah, great, simply great and very timely and uh, and useful. Um, okay, so if you have uh, um, any question for Clemens, please do not uh, forget to include uh, and encode your question in the chat function. We will address them at the end after the second presentation. So now I'm turning uh, turning right over to uh, Katerina Wolfgang. No, Wolfhart, sorry for the, the pronunciation. She is also part of the Fraunhofer family, working as a researcher. Uh, Katerina is also the coordinator of the European project MICA. MICA that started uh, 
one year ago and will end uh, in uh, 2023. So uh, Katerina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm trying to share my slides. Okay, this should work. Then thank you for this kind introduction and thank you also for the chance uh, for me to introduce our project here. So our project is called MICAT and MICAT stands for Multiple Impacts Calculation Tool. So what we are going to do is to develop a tool to estimate these multiple impacts of energy efficiency. We, that means we are a team of seven institutions that are already well experienced in that topic, having a focus either on this tool development part like Fraunhofer and Wuppertal Institute, E3 Modeling and IASA, and uh, the others on stakeholder engagement like ICLEI, IECP and WISE Europe. So the general project idea, you know, um, that the relevance uh, about the relevance of energy efficiency to mitigate climate change, and you also know that we encounter the energy efficiency gap, which might uh, imply the question, is energy efficiency not enough? So we are looking for additional benefits and we ask if they do pay off. These additional benefits could be those like here shown in the IEA flower. They are also called uh, multiple impacts, co-benefits, non-energy benefits, multiple impacts or multiple benefits. And they accompany these energy efficiency project and measures and provide additional arguments to implement these energy efficiency measures, but they are rarely reported, although they are explicitly mentioned in the EC's policy making, like in the EPPD, the EED and the reportings in the NECPs. So what we are going to do is to show the full set of advantages of energy efficiency policy measures through monetization of impacts and cost benefit analysis of these multiple impacts. Our main objective is to develop this comprehensive approach to estimate multiple impacts of energy efficiency by providing a publicly available and easily usable online tool. So we are going to link um, science policy and stakeholders and generate advantages for all. So the main features of our planned tool are the quantification and monetization of different categories of these multiple impacts and also allow analysis on three governmental levels, which is EU, national and to some degree also on the local level to facilitate these data driven decisions for sustainable policies. Starting from a conceptual framework of emp an empirical basis of these uh, three types, let's say of impact, which are social, economic and environmental impacts. We are using data and scenarios uh, and policies from this EU national and local level to quantify or even monetize these impact. This step is also where uh, the stakeholders come into play and uh, we want to meet their needs and validate the results with their help. This feedback loops will be done in repeatedly in workshops. So we use their input to further develop the tool and then play the results back to them to uh, use them in the next workshop. So we have three rounds of workshops on each of these three level and we are now more or less starting these rounds of workshops. So we are here more or less more in the beginning of the project. We started in October last year and we'll hopefully have this complete set of, of features of the tool um, by fall uh, 2023. So I would like to go a bit into detail of this tool development on the one hand and uh, the stakeholder engagement on the other hand. Regarding the cool tool development, we luckily do not have to start from scratch. So the uh, partners in our team are already experienced with these topics and were also involved in um, two previous projects like the Combi project and Odyssey Muir and both had some kinds of uh, tools that were already dealing with these multiple impact approach. So um, both of these tools cover an evaluation of multiple impacts on also national levels. And the main differences are that the Combi tool is based on scenario analysis that allow a quantification of most of the impacts, but the results are not that much transferable to different scenarios or data, so it's more or less static. And the MBE tool, which is part of the Odyssey Mu project, is highly adaptable, but less detailed and not so much quantifiable. So we are planning in our Mika tool to combine both advantages, rely, rely on this indicator approach, but we want to have more quantification and details, staying flexible for input data for different kinds of evaluation, and we want to add uh, analysis on the local level. 
So this is this, this are these indicators I was talking about our multiple impacts that will be covered by our tool. They can be categorized more or less in three main categories like social, economic and environmental benefits. And we have a lot of subcategories. And um, we are this, this is the starting point for the discussion with the stakeholders. So we are trying to find out where is their focus and do they see further impacts they want to have added and what kind of data can they deliver um, and does this meet their needs. So our stakeholder workshops have the main goal to maximize the tool's usefulness. So we are uh, targeting a large group and wide range of use cases. And with the, this data we get, we want to validate the data from the case studies on the three governmental levels. And like this, we on the other hand want to guarantee to fit their requirements and to maximize the use for scientists, stakeholders and for policymakers. So in the process of these workshops and uh, stakeholder engagement, we try to make them familiar with our tool and our approach and get direct feedback to improve the tool. And this is more or less reflected in our three rounds of workshops on each of these three levels. So we have three steps. The first step is to embed the tool, which means that we define the scope on each level with each level partner and their strategies and to identify the data we have available and we can, which we can work with in our tool. The second step is then we explain our assumptions and our methodology to create transparency, discuss our dis assumptions and validate the first results. And then the last step, when the tool is more or less ready, we try to introduce the tool and its functions and want to train our stakeholders to implement this. I would want to go a bit more into detail on uh, this local level workshops. We will start with, with this level and this is also more or less this newer part in this tool development. So we had an open call for cities so they could all participate as uh, our pilots and they will accompany us or we will accompany them during this process of tool development, especially on this local level. So they are already benefiting through this uh, project process and not just in the end by the tool. We were uh, able and happy to have Tartu from Estonia, Vittoria Gastes from Spain and Calvia from the island of Mallorca in Spain as our pilot cities. And we are going to support them or the regional governments to gain a better insight into energy policy impacts. We help them to monitor and report on energy efficiency measures and policy impacts. And during this process of workshops and communication, and uh, we are hoping that we can get a variety of local stakeholders that are attached to each of our city partners so that we get this discussion running also among them to strengthen the interdepartmental collaboration and to achieve common policy goals. And in the end, we will probably be able to assess and quantify the multiple impacts of energy efficiency measures. So this uh, is more or less the, uh, what which, with which we are going into this first round of workshop. We have a list of indicators. So this is just an example. And we are going to discuss all these details on each level which, with, with each city and will then have a map of which are of most, most interesting to them, which kind of data is available, where do we have to get uh, other da data from to, let's say, if some data is, is not available and, and so on. And in the end, hopefully, we will. I can. I can in, in two years from now, I could present our results. Now that we are not that far in the process of, of our project, I uh, could luckily get the results from the Combi project I was talking about earlier. So the colleagues from Wuppertal Institute um, presented that at the end of their project, and this might give you an expression of how our results could look like. So you see here also the three categories of environmental, social and economic benefits. And with a time frame of 2030, we have now here the EU wide figures that uh, illustrate the additional value of this multiple impacts. On the right hand side, you can see that the energy cost savings generally would be higher than the investment costs, but there's another really large amount of, of savings that could be made by these multiple impacts. And this uh, conservative estimation you see here in the dark red color is without double countings. So we just we, we, we try to avoid those that could also uh, integrate, uh, let's say benefits they, that are also covered by another 
one of these multiple impacts, but the, the true benefit could even be higher if, if you regard the, the uh, benefits that are attached to these benefits that are, um, could be put into numbers here. And also for our tool, it should be possible in uh, the next steps to have uh, analysis on different levels, which means for different kinds of these multiple impacts or like here for um, a certain set of, of, um, of measures like residential refurbishment here. And in this concrete case, you can see that two thirds of the energy cost savings uh, can be added with these multiple impacts. And this could be, of course, an argument to decide for these measures. So to summarize, our ambition is to go beyond the approaches we already have with earlier multiple benefits tools like in Odyssey and Combi by refining our methods. And it should be more easy to use, more flexible to adapt and to be individualized. So we have different levels, different scenarios and policies that can be covered by a tool and a cost benefit analysis should also be possible. We are going to cover these key national, uh, local and EU scenarios, and we would want to have um, the option to evaluate custom customized scenarios on each level. So we have an open modeling module, which can later be easily attached to existing models. Um, with this large target group we have, we hope to maximize the usefulness for a wide range of use cases using input data from case studies on each level and involving stakeholders of each level. So hopefully this might lead to an establishment of MECAT as a semi-standardized tool for the evaluation of energy efficiency policies regarding their non-energy impacts. So that's it from my side. I'm happy to receive your question in the session or even later you have my contact in case you want to contact me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Katerina, for this uh, helicopter review, I would say, on the project, uh, on the project activities. Uh, I really appreciate, I must say, the emphasis that you put on the local dimension. As we heard also this morning, the local dimension, uh, actually the clean energy transition is going to happen very much at the local level. So, and furthermore, people are moving uh, uh, to live on cities more and more, right or wrong, but this is a, a, fact, a fact. And a huge amount of energy will be needed, uh, you know, to power the city, to power the infrastructure of the city, telco, sewage, and so on. So we have to make sure that the right uh, investment uh, will be done, and uh, and for right right investments, I do I do mention I do. Uh, mean uh, the, the investment on energy efficiency and sustainable uh, uh, measures. So let me have a look at the chat, but uh, yeah, indeed uh, uh, we haven't received for the moment um, any questions, but please uh, really uh, ask the audience to, to, yeah, to really look at the chat function as a way to engage with us and to share your comments and questions. So really um, go ahead. So my first question will be uh, for Clemens. And uh, indeed, Clemens, during your presentation, you have, uh, and during the implementation of the M Benefits project, uh, uh, you have approached many uh, and involved many companies. And um, my question would be, uh, so what were really the success factors uh, of the pilot projects? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that uh, interesting question, Filippo. Um, I mean, the, the success factors of, of, the, of the pilots uh, were first, we, of course, we needed uh, uh, somebody, somebody in the company, a contact point who, who was interested in the topic and to drive that. So, so that's uh, uh, crucial. It's about people who want to, to involve and engage and uh, have the openness uh, to, to go beyond the classical thinking. So, so to think out of the box, because that's, that is what multiple benefits, the multiple benefits approach is about, is to think about your classic, uh, outside your classical box of, of energy savings and then being very uh, uh, yeah, um, narrow perhaps in the, in the assessment. And um, then the success factor was really when you had other people in the companies who were uh, willingly taking taking that up, and we got feedback from from one company um, uh, in Italy, who's uh, who said the great the great thing about the M benefit part, our participation in the M benefits projects was on the one hand of course that we implemented some some energy savings projects, but on the other hand our departments our various departments started talking to each other much more than they did before to develop common projects. So it was more or less really a kickoff for the company to to think outside this 
single domain of energy efficiency projects, which are important. In the end, that's what we want to do. I mean, we, we, do the, we do the whole procedure to save energy and to mitigate climate change. But on the other hand, that we need this whole, uh, uh, the, the, the companies were, were really excited about learning what, other what the needs of other departments are and how they can become better and develop new project ideas then together in the end. So, so that was really a driver um, that we took the energy efficiency projects out of their out of their corner and and make it a topic of of more people in the company and um, then it was really independent of what companies we had so we had as I showed the company with eight employees we had ones with thousands we had projects which dealt with heating systems some even with PV and 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 solar installation some which dealt with the energetic renovations of the building some from the public sector some from the private sector. So there we were completely, completely open. I mean, it was the ma major driver was the open mindedness of, of the people involved in those projects. Yeah, I, I see. Very, very interesting. And actually, I like also to think that an European project has been also able somehow to, to break the silos between the different departments of our company. So great. Thank you, Clemens. Uh, my second question is for Katerina. And uh, you have uh, clearly highlighted uh, uh, in your presentation, Katerina, the concept of uh, multiple impacts. But my question will be, are these impacts or multiple impacts uh, only positive or there are also some, I would say, negative uh, side effects? Yes, thank you. We were talking about that in the proposal for us, uh, phase. <laughs> and uh, when we uh, decided for the project's name, we decided for multiple impacts instead of multiple benefits because the question was, what if it gets worse? <laughs> so um, yes, we are covering also the negative impacts in the way that um, we phrased these um, three kinds uh, types of multiple impacts in a positive way. What we would see in our calculation if these indicators became worse or let's say had a tendency to a negative part and this could be for for um yeah single sections like for example uh, resources or uh, employment effects of a certain sector could get lower while they might rise in another one so yes we are covering these possibly negative effects too yeah Great. So good that uh, you are taking care also on this uh, additional element. So I, I don't see any other uh, questions. So I would say that uh, we can indeed uh, close the, the event a couple of minutes before. I do believe that uh, these two presentations really uh, nicely complement each other uh, in the sense that uh, M Benefits project really provide us an interesting overview on what is happening within the company, whereas the MICAT project is uh, really focusing at I would say uh, the policy dimension or, uh, or the urban uh, dimension, I would say. So I trust that uh, you, are, you all uh, will take home uh, further inspiration on how to foster the clean energy transition of our companies and cities. And in this regard, let me um, remind you that if you want to learn more on the new clean energy transition sub-program of the LIFE program, uh, there will be tomorrow afternoon a um, LIFE st uh, virtual stand um, where you can uh, learn more. And also at 2.30, there will be, sorry, an info session. I was also reading myself. Uh, always uh, start uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, where you can learn more about the LIFE uh, clean energy transition sub-program. Program. So thank you again and uh, see you on the next uh, sessions that uh, will uh, that we will start at two uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes so at two o'clock sharp and uh, let me also thanks again the two speakers for their time and the interesting um, presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.